This is my usual view of our office on ABC and as you can see it's empty. Barry's computer is not here and neither is Baz. Stay watching and I'll tell you why he's gone, where he's gone and I'll share a video of him showing you what he's doing right now. Also in this video we take you to what's been called one of the best preserved ancient cities in Turkey. We'd love to hear your thoughts after watching this video. I'm Barry. I'm Ansha. This is the continuing journey of Sailing ABC. We've just stocked up on fuel and today we're off to somewhere. <laughs> Telmos. <laughs> Telmesos. Telmesos. Tel 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 I've typed it in. I've typed it into the sat now. <laughs> okay, bear with us and I'll tell you where we're going. We've just topped up with diesel and we are today going just slightly northwest of Antalya, which is about two hours away and it's to a place called Termesos, which according to TripAdvisor is one of the best preserved sites in Turkey. So that's going to be interesting. I think it's up a hill. Up a hill. Okay. So we might have a nice view. Cool. All right, we'll see you there. Snow's nearly all melted. Get to that time of year again. Yeah. We're in Antalya following Flossie's instructions. It's been really busy on the roads, hasn't it? I've never seen the roads so busy. I mean, I don't know if it's um, because the season has started or whether yeah. it's uh, a particular sort of day. Obviously now we're in Antalya, it's city traffic. Mm. That'll be Mr. Ataturk on his horse up there. I reckon. See, that's what we missed when we got on the, tr <laughs> on the tram lines the other time over here. <gasps> we're off, we're on a tram line. Oh, crap. Oh, Baz, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. We're not supposed to be on here. That was a close one. <laughs> So we're going inland again now, which is correct, according to what I noticed on the map. When I was looking to where we were going. <laughs> and up ahead, it looks like um, Ataturk's head has been carved into a mountainside. Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh. Turn left. Geldeners, welcome to Termesos. Tension spike barriers aren't going that way. Yeah. <laughs> Merhaba. Merhaba. Teşekkür ederim. We have an no visitor information centre. That looks like a place to go. Car parking. This is really well set up. Look at how many barbecues and tables and chairs there are for tourists. It's a very large toilet block. And that's the uh, visitor centre which we're going to as well. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, this is not uh, a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> we've got... Um, well, we know we've, we've seen them, so we know they exist. Wild boar, bears. bears. Wolves, foxes. Okay. okay, let's hope we don't see any of them. Right, it would be nice to see a stack. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, we're inside the visitor information center and they've got these, um, I guess these are the, the birds, ducks, and things that live around this area. Looks like some sort of uh, mountain cat. Yeah. Holy crap, hope we don't meet one of them. <laughs> yeah. No, I won't mind if we if we meet one of them. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, that's, that yeah. We could run away from that. <laughs> so we are about eight kilometres away from the actual site itself. We're climbing the hill, 
glad we've got a road to go on that we can take the car because it's eight kilometres away. <laughs> I certainly like to build these things way out in the sticks. They did. I wonder. I'm always curious as to you know how they found the area and then chose to build it. Because do you think they just sent scouts around just to? I've no clue. Look? I mean, I mean it's, yeah. look how mountainous it is. Mountainous bush. You know, like what? How many of those did they have to scour before they chose this particular mountain? I mean, I guess a water source would be yeah. a primary objective. So maybe they just followed a river, a river uphill, uphill and, until it got to the source, or yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's a long way up. It is. I'm glad we're here while it's empty because uh, we wouldn't want to be on this road when it's really busy. With cars coming down yeah. and maybe tourist buses, tourist coaches. Buses, yeah. Like lean towards the yeah, road. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh wow. That's quite busy. Yeah. Up here, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the League of Artemis. So I guess this is probably just earthquake damage. Yeah. It's funny how the the doorway, the entrance, is the only thing standing. Here's a testament to arches being a wonderful construction idea. Pretty much the only thing left standing here are the two arches. Yeah, the strongest structures of the building. Huh? Yeah, even with a, a big boulder on top of them. On the way up we were talking about um, you know, how they chose these places, obviously water being a primary objective. Well this is a water system. Interesting design, never seen sort of like triangular shapes before. Just when I thought my legs and knees and feet were getting back to normal after Yanatash, the mountain with the fire on it. We're back to doing this again. <laughs> Which is really what we need. We do. The fact that they built these uh, cities, towns in such um, out of the way places is a testament I think to how widespread the pirate threat was or raiders from the sea because we're quite a way inland now and uh, the idea that pirates would park their boats and come this far inland just to raid seems a bit of a long stretch. Here's an encouraging sign with the lower city walls which means there are higher city walls somewhere. Right. I'm hoping that is the upper city wall. It must have come about a kilometre and a half. Feels like it. Yeah. And they've built a, a wall right across the valley here. And all the blocks have been cut to just fit perfectly. Right, onwards. A quick scrabble over some down low boulders and rocks and uh, gets us into the, the bathhouse uh, and gymnasium area. I was watching a YouTube video of um, some ancient sites in Greece and I noticed that they're all uh, roped off so you can't do what I'm about to do here right now and that is walk up to the actual ancient monument and touch it. It's very controlled in Greece, but here in Turkey, it's access all areas. Let's have a look through here. Oh, this is just a place for a statue. I actually thought that was going to be a window. There's a little lizard there. Teeny tiny. 
in earthquake zones, I think it should be um, compulsory to build all of your buildings out of arches. Yes. Because <laughs> it's the bit that stands. We were following this little trail uh, that led off to somewhere. But further down the trail we saw evidence of uh, wild boar digging into the ground searching for whatever they eat. And then I thought I heard something off in the bush. So we decided it'd be best to turn around and go back where, where we came from. <laughs> you don't want to meet one of those buggers out here. It'll take you out. Yeah, they can see a uh, wild boar at, uh, in that video when we went and visited Michelle and Janet. Get an idea of how big things are. Yeah, I'll put a link to the video in the top corner of this video. On the road down there, it's a tanker truck. That's how high up we are. This place is billed as one of the uh, most preserved um, ancient sites, but I tend to disagree with that. Yeah, yeah um, it's certainly large and sprawling, and a lot of the stone is still here, it hasn't been taken away to build other houses. Well, nobody bothered coming up here no, to exactly take the stone. <laughs> I'm trying to be diplomatic here. Okay, um, but yeah, it's... You, you can get, still get, um, you know, an idea of how magnificent it would have looked because the, just the, the actual way they, you know, when the, the, the walls that you see that are still standing have been built so precisely. Uh, it would have been incredible when it was new. If you're unsteady on your feet though, it might not be the most ideal one to walk around, hey? Mm, yeah. It's very much a clambering exercise. Oh. Got one word for you. Arches, still in its original position and upright at least, there's a plinth where a statue would have sat atop. I listen to the birds. Don't buzz. What's Don't this? say it. What's that, what's that called? All, all together now? <laughs> Holy crap, that's deep. Wow. Somebody must have dug that out. That is immense. Ooh. <laughs> Does that make you go all Yes, squidgy? making me go all squidgy. Yeah, me too. That is deep. I've climbed up what feels like, I don't know, another kilometre. I left Baz about 200 metres just below. Um, and I've come to this tomb and oh, first of all I went, oh, okay, so there's a sort of scooped out thing and that's obviously where the body was buried. But, feeling slightly disappointed, I looked and look at this. Look at that! Isn't that amazing? <sighs> Actually, the more you look, the more you see it's got carvings in the Yeah. Oops. Oh, oh. There's an eagle. Well, at least it's downhill from here. Yes. Look at this, it's just spectacular, the view. That's where we were walking just before. And I think that's the back wall of the theatre, just there. And some tombs over there. It's just an incredible view. It's a tomb with a view. Santalia down there. And there's Baz trotting down the hill. And here's me, just about to follow. <laughs> oh God. Well, that 
that was the biggest walk yet, I reckon. <laughs> Certainly was. My my all my muscles in my legs are just shaking. Well, it's because you've not really done a lot for a few months. Yeah. So I think it's probably a good thing that we're getting out and about. But yeah. And actually, yeah. considering we we sort of like went, oh, you know, it's all run down. Some of the other places that we found, like the um, the theatre and the yeah, I would definitely. Uh, Quite interesting. Yeah, if you're not steady on your feet, don't go there. Don't go there. Coming down's coming really down slippy. It's just as bad as, as going up, really. Well, it's worse in a way because it's just very, very slippy. It's either very fine pebbles or shiny, well worn rocks. So, like, you have to be on alert all the time when you're yeah. coming down. <laughs> but it's another place ticked off yeah, the list. And well worth coming to, I reckon. Yeah, what time is some it? of the views were incredible. Is that one? Or 15? Three. Jeez, 20 three. past three. Already? Yeah. Shake wits. I'm ready for lunch now. Okay, well let's go and find something somewhere. Okay, sounds like a plan. Okay, this is the restaurant that's been highly recommended to us. It's a, a fish restaurant basically. So we'll wander over. Apparently it's got a lot of eclectic sort of stuff all around the place. We've even got a puppy dog. There's a stream running through it. Merhaba. Hoş bulduk. Um, can we pay with a credit card? Credit card. Card you too. Okay. So you've got these little cabins and you can either do the, uh, the Turkish sit-down method or you can get um, you know, a normal sized table and chairs, like that. But look at all this stuff. It's big. And the water, there's water running all through it. And there's fish. Oh. Hi, thank you. They've got a lot of fish. So what I ordered in a Dana kebab. And you ordered the fish, but you get this lot included as well. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. And this, look at this, look. Big, oh, fluffy, fresh fluffy. out of the oven. And that steam that came out of the first one. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's also tasty back right here. Yum. The prices are excellent. Uh, the whole lot came to 160 Turkish lira, which is approximately 15, 16 Aussie dollars. Can't beat that. It was and it was so well cooked and prepared. And all the little things that we got, you know, there, were, there, there was also cheese and nuts and things that you that I haven't had sort of as a precursor to a meal before. So it was lovely. And then they gave us date, halva, and tea, and it was all included. Yeah. And it was so. And the, oh god, the fish, the bread. <laughs> Just one thing to note, though, they do not serve alcohol. It's a uh, soft drinks only. Anyway, time to head back to the ranch, which is that way. As often happens with liverboards, the cost of maintaining ABC has been greater than the size of our savings and our income streams. So Baz has bitten the bullet and he's gone back to the UK and he's doing some hard labour 12 hours a day seven days a week for a couple of months so that we can top up our kitty and go back out on the sea again in the meantime i got a little bit lonely looking at his empty space so i've moved myself around to this end of the table and i've actually got a nice view out of the companionway hatch while I'm doing the editing. Anyway, Baz has sent a video of the work that he's been doing because we thought that you might be interested in that. 
So without further ado, let's go over to Baz. As you can see, this is a very big shed, and I'll just show you what we've been working on for the last uh, two weeks. This is one half of the machine that we've been working around. Uh, these three hoppers get filled up with um, compost, and then it gets mashed up into a finer and finer thing, gets sent off to conveyor belts over to that side, gets mashed up even more, goes up these conveyors through the hole in the wall into the next room, where something happens to it in there, I don't know. But this is the walkway uh, around these hoppers for maintenance and also the guys who put stuff in and somewhere else on the line I'll show you later so these are the, uh, the first set of steps at the far end so we've uh, built all the supporting steel framework for this and it's installed all the uh, float something I can't quite remember float something and uh, all the handrails and all the uprights these are the big hoppers we didn't build those, we just built building the, uh, the maintenance walkways Oops, around the top of them. Down a step, onto a very big platform. And the reason why there are no handrails along here is because another company is coming in and they're going to put in similar handrails to what we've got and they're uh, fold down handrails because a, um, a forklift will come in along here with a pallet, lift the pallet up to this level and slide it here. A guy will be standing here, at least one guy, maybe two, and the bags that are on that pallet get cut open and fed into these hoppers, which get mixed in with the um, compost. Now we come to a little uh, bridge walkway area, um, because this is the control room where it all gets controlled from. It's all set up and ready to go. So again, we come over to this side where we've got a similar setup up one step along another back walkway with the big hoppers on this side of the, the machinery and down the steps at the other side. We've closed them off at the moment because people are not allowed to come up here because there are no uh, railings on the big ledge. Uh, so there's a potential hazard there for them to fall. But yeah, that's what we've been doing for the last two and a half weeks. So that's really hard work and long hours for Barry who's still getting over his long haul COVID. And I just want to say thank you so much, love. You are an absolute hero doing what you're doing. I really, really appreciate that you're doing this for you and me and ABC. So it looks as if we've run out of time on this video and we haven't been able to bring you the life draft segment which we'll bring you next time and we'll also take you along on a day out with a couple of our wonderful patrons. Until then we'd like to say a big thank you to all of our patrons for keeping us afloat. You know how important you are to us and also to our wonderful subscribers and followers on all of our social media and especially for all of you who just take the time out to click that like button, leave a comment or to let our adverts run on our YouTube videos because it all adds up more than you realise. Thanks guys and gals and we'll see you next time on Sailing ABC.